because my daughter was a year remnant and you know that. Regardless, what's going on, Pickles? Um, yeah, I'm doing stand-up comedy right now because I'm standing up and people got to consider me funny. Um, funny looking, but that's okay. I'm going to make it work anyway. So, I'm in my bonnet. You may have noticed that I just woke up. The bonnet is on my head. Um, I'm not ashamed of my hair. I don't care if y'all see my hair. I actually wear my bonnet in some videos or if you don't wear it in some videos, it really doesn't matter to me. But today I decided to wear my bonnet just to indicate to you guys that I just woke up. And this is stand-up comedy, but your girl is heavily pregnant. So I'm going to sit my butt down in a minute or two. I just want to start standing up so I can say that this is stand-up comedy and make an excuse. So anyways... I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking, oh my gosh, you're pregnant, not congratulations, but oh shoot, she's getting laid, yeah, I'm getting laid, that is why I have three kids, anyways, moving forward, guys, I woke up from a dream just now, I was in bed, laying with my husband, and I started peeling my little eyes open, they started widening, and I'm like, oh, this is the real world, I'm not actually in an apocalyptic state, yeah, I don't know what was going on in my dream. Basically, my friend had a water baby. I had to keep this water baby safe from like a person who was like not even a real person. They just wanted the water baby and it was weird. I don't even know what to tell you. So I hid the baby in a drawer. I know that sounds unsafe, but I had to hide the baby somewhere. So I hid the baby in a drawer and I went back out to the room everybody was staying and sheltering in. Basically, the room was big had a bunch of chairs kind of going back like a presentation room there was a small aisle in the middle aisles on the side almost like a church almost like a church you know how the chairs be going everywhere and there's a big screen in the front for them to the church music the church music everybody sings but there's usually like three screens well in my dream there was one big screen so um everybody's getting called everybody's name's getting called to do like a three to five minute presentation to keep everybody entertained and eventually my name gets called and for some reason even though i knew everybody's name was getting called i didn't think my name was gonna get called i'm just sitting here like oh me my turn i should have been paying attention on how to set up the presentation i should have been so i'm thinking what am i going to talk about what am i going to show what am i going to do i don't even know how to spend these three or five minutes i'm probably just gonna stare awkwardly back at you guys but you know what? In my dream, I decided I'm going to figure out how to make this presentation slide work. And I'm just going to show my YouTube channel. So I start trying to pull up my YouTube channel. But they have this freaking remote. No keyboard. No mouse. It's a freaking remote to type everything, to click on things, to scroll the mouse across the screen. It was impossible to figure out. So I look like a doofus spending three and a half of my five minutes trying to figure out the freaking presentation the freaking projector so at this point i'm like i give up i'm just gonna try to type in my name and whatever first comes up i'm gonna click on it and so basically i typed in sji which is sjda so i was trying to get there and i was hoping it would auto pop up because like you know when you when you typed up enough your name auto pops up mine did not pop up it was just like a random grocery store clip and i just had to run with it so i clicked on the grocery store and i was like look guys <laughs> I was trying to show you my YouTube channel, but it's not working. So feel free to pull out your phones and check out my YouTube channel. But right now you're going to look at this grocery store clip. And I'm just going to talk to y'all for a few minutes because my time is almost up. So I start sitting there and I'm like, whatever, I guess I can do a little comedy, do a little stand up, do a little this, do a little that. Hence why I'm here right now talking to y'all in real life. Because I had a dream that I was being a stand up comedian because the world was ending and we were all sheltered in one room and there was a little bit of food in the back. And by the time I got, go, got done with my set, I was going to get that food in the back. And then I woke up so I didn't get any food in the back. There was like chicken, there was candy canes, there was um this box of stuff where everybody could put something like, there was pregnancy tests in there used there were uh, photos in there of people in their childhoods and trinkets and stuff i was like "Ooh, cool where's my trinket i couldn't find my trinket and then i woke up so anyways i'm sitting here like oh if i can be a stand-up comedian in my dream i guess i can be a stand-up comedian in real life so here's a couple of i guess jokes here's a set what is a set if i was a comedian i would not be making sets i would literally just be like i'm gonna get on the stage and just talk talk out of my butt for, I'm gonna get paid to talk out of my butt for me personally 
I quickly jotted down a couple of the notes from my dream so I could talk about it. So maybe that's my set, but I have no idea, no understanding the concept of a set. But the first thing I want to talk about is my husband. My husband is so hilarious. I don't know why he loves me so much. <laughs> Let me just get that straight. I know that I'm a hoot. I know that I'm incredibly sexy. And I know that I'm awesome. But why is this man so obsessed with me? When I tell you that our relationship is so bizarre, like, it's been four years we've been together. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, this is where you clap and say, awesome, good job. Anyway, we've been, we've been together four years, going on three kids. This dude, week one of us meeting in person, because we met during the whole COVID crisis, you can't talk to people, can't touch people, can't breathe on people. So we were talking online for about two weeks. I told him, hey, I don't want to meet up with you until I know you're not a serial killer. I'm not going to waste my COVID visit for somebody who's a serial killer. So I ended up vetting him, making sure he's not a serial killer. And he's heavily flirted with me in these two weeks. We're not going to mention how he ghosted me in the first week and then came back. And then we spent two great weeks together. We're just going to talk about how we talked for two weeks straight and everything was good. Okay? So everything was fine. And I'm like, oh, this dude might actually have real feelings for me. And even if he doesn't, I'm just trying to get laid. And it's been a minute since I got laid. In fact, I had lost my virginity to my high school boyfriend. And... Well, he was my work boyfriend, so we worked together. And then we, yeah. So you get it. He didn't go to my high school. He was actually older than me. But long story short, I was trying to get some, some new on the roster. So I was just prowling the dating apps, looking for nothing serious. And boom, I met my husband. So he was over here talking about, you're so amazing. You're the cutest girl in the world. Who who else is sliding up on your social medias? There better not be anybody on your social medias. It's only me. I'm the only one for you. And I'm like, dude, you are too much. But I like the attention, so thanks. And keep in mind, I had multiple other people I was talking to. So he is not all I needed. He is not all that was cozying up to me trying to get in the good spot. And at the time, I wasn't a social media guru. I would, I'd put a couple silly videos on the internet and see what would, you know, what would work. And I had 100,000 people on my uh, social media, you know, laughing at my stuff or whatever. But I was by no means as big as I am now. I'm not even that big. I'm like, <laughs> anyways, regardless, my husband likes to say I'm famous. I'm not famous. It's funny, because when you get recognized in public, <laughs> I've been recognized in public a handful of times. Uh, pretty much every single time I go out, anytime I go anywhere, I get recognized. But it's funny, because I'm like, hi. They're like, oh my gosh, are you like DJ ASMR? Are you said Jamie? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, no. Me, I'm be confused with somebody sexier and hotter and smarter. Bye. I just walk away. I'm oh, just kidding. I've done that to a couple of people, but they they freak out. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come here. And I'm like, no, it's me. I'm just I'm just messing around with you. But anyways, it's funny getting recognized about because people walk up to you and they're like, oh, my gosh. Do you still have that left birthmark on your bottom of your foot? Oh, my gosh. I've been watching you since five years ago, 2019. Your first video came out. You were just blowing your nose into a napkin and you laughed and like, too much snot came out and you started bleeding. And I'm like, you know a lot about me. What's your name? Hi. <laughs> it's like the most awkward interaction ever. It's like, you know everything about me. And I'm just like, hug? <laughs> What's your name? So I think getting recognized in public is honestly just a super funny comedy act in its own. Because here is somebody walking up to me and they know a handful of things about me. And I am just like, thanks. <laughs> Because I just post random stuff on the internet and people decide to watch. So, it, I feel like it goes the same for every celebrity. The celebrities are like, let's say a movie star. Angelina Jolie, for instance. She's like, in movies, we've never like seen her personal life in too much detail other than the tabloids. And she's adopted a bunch of kids or whatever. But it's like, oh my god, Angelina. Oh my god, stop. hi. Are you Angelina Jolie? I've seen you in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Your cheekbones are awesome. Oh my god, you look like a fish a little bit. And it's like, she's just bombarded with okay you want an autograph great thanks have a great day and it's just so awkward <laughs> you'll never understand unless you're the person getting recognized but i just thought it was so funny anyways moving forward my husband <laughs> he's been with me when i've been recognized in public a couple of times and he'll be like oh my gosh sid jd asmr just got recognized and he just makes a whole deal out of it he's like i can't believe i i get to sleep with somebody at night who's famous i'm like oh my god I'm not famous. I'm, I'm so far from famous. I'm just literally a person who plays in my closet. 
for money. <laughs> and he is so supportive, but regardless, he's a goof. He's a goofball. He's a doofus. This man was obsessed with me by the first two weeks. I have no idea why. I have no idea if my love potion worked, if my love spell worked, but it's crazy because I put that love spell on him after we met in person. So it's like the two weeks before, he was already smitten. So this boy, the first day that I meet him, has the audacity to be like, oh, you know, welcome into my house. My dad's going to cook us dinner. You know, my mom lives in another state, but welcome in, welcome in. Let's sit in the living room and watch TV. I'm like, cool. He grabs me and puts me on his lap. And I'm like, um, sir? So, like, he literally has me on his lap. I'm not even kidding. He puts me on his lap and I'm like, S sir? Sir? Please put me down. So he like, puts me over to the side so that we're sitting next to each other like two normal human beings because he put me on his lap i've never even met this dude before ever <laughs> we talked online for a little bit and he put me in his lap the first time we freaking met and i was like put me down sir and so after that i was like let's just cuddle so i like snuggled up to him a little bit he snuggled up to me a little bit holding me while watching that show tiger king that was popular covid times it was stupid but we were just watching something to watch kind of just getting to know each other feeling each other's vibe out and i immediately felt a strong connection to him i was like oh i feel safe here i like him he's cute and then after a little while he's like giving me that look of like i want to give you a kiss and i'm thinking oh a little peck you know like you know first kiss vibes this dude tried to inhale my face. He tried to eat my face. He, he, he like grabs my chin almost. He's like, <gasps> and I was like, I literally put my hand between his face and my face. I was like, no. I was like, I don't know who you were kissing before me, but that's not how you do it, honey. And so I told him, no, you don't know how to kiss. This is how you kiss. And so I grabbed his cheeks and I go, mm -hmm. just a nice little peck, lip to lip. And then just a, mm, a little bit of open mouth is okay when we know each other a little bit better. No tongue, but a little bit of open mouth is okay a little bit later. So he <laughs> apparently loved my kiss. Gave me a couple more after that. Not in a make out way, just in like a peck way. And then he's like, you want to go to my room to watch a movie? I'm like, we're already watching TV out here in the open space living room. And then he's like, do you want to go to my room to watch a movie? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm about to get laid and in the end i was just there to get laid i had a mission although i had a good vibe with this guy i didn't see him as my future husband or anything like that like i may have been girly girly and like oh i'm gonna marry him he's so cute he's he's obsessed with me i'm obsessed with him we're gonna get married like people say that all the time but they don't really think it's gonna happen so he takes me back to his room we do the do and then he rolls over after he's exhausted he's like <gasps> and i'm exhausted i'm like <sighs> And he's like, I think I'm in love with you. I was like, this is our first date. I've only talked to you online for two weeks. Either I've got that punini that is so fire, so flames. Because actually, the guy I lost my virginity to told me he loved me after we did it too. And I was like, dang, I got that fire. But anyway, I was like, either my punini is so good, so fire, so flames. Or you're just trying to get laid again, or you're a serial killer. There's a no in between. I waited two weeks to make sure you weren't a serial killer, and now you're gonna kill me. This is it. This is the moment you're gonna get into my head, love bomb me, and kill me. And he's like, No, I'm, I'm serious. I, I think I'm in love with you. And me being an idiot, I was like, I, I think I love you too. But you said it first, so it's okay if I say it. And then he was just like, Cool. And I was like, cool. <laughs> it was super weird. Fast forward about a week. Now I've been seeing this guy every single day since then. I mean, he told me he freaking loved me for Pete's sake. I feel like I kind of have an obligation to him, like a like a lost puppy that kind of cozied up to your foot when you're going on a walk or going on a jog or going on a bike ride. You're like, who's your owner? And then they're like, no, you're my new owner. And it's like, um, I don't even like animals. And then they're like, well, too bad. I'm sticking with you the rest of this workout, the rest of this walk, the rest of this trip. So I'm like, okay, I got this lost puppy. I'm going to see him every day. So we hang out for the following week. Every day I'm going over to his place. He's not going to mine because I live with my brother and he lives with his dad. So I wasn't really ready for him to meet my brother because my brother's like my best friend. And his dad was just like his dad. You know what I'm saying? It's normal to meet somebody's parents when you're dating them. So after a week, I go back and see him and we go to walk his dog. 
his dog today was baby girl and she used to be walked once or twice every day or whatever so he usually walked her when i got there and he walked her when i left and i walked with him with the dog what am i gonna do sit inside and like chop liver waiting on him like a freaking bell girl no so i'm sitting there like hey i'll go walk with you and we go down the apartment steps and for some reason as soon as we get down the apartment steps he stops with the dog kind of lets her go for a second gets on one knee says hey i don't have a ring but will you marry me and i'm like get the fuck off the ground you fucking weirdo and he's like no i'm so serious i don't have a ring or anything but will you please marry me sometime in the future when i get a ring i was like get the fuck off the ground you weirdo and he was just looking at me like i'm not getting up until you say yes he literally said that i'm not getting up until you say yes i'm not getting off my knee until you say i was like sir there's people around um get up i don't even know who you are we are just hooking up and he's like say yes say yes and i was like okay yes just get up please just get up just yes just get up he's like yes she said yes and then he gets up and we continue the walk and he's holding my hand just acting like he didn't just propose to me and this is the first time i've been proposed to guys believe it or not it took me a whole 18 years to get a proposal i know most people wait a little bit longer than that but 18 years was a long time for a girl with a dream journal so i was like okay maybe this is my love story maybe this is my romeo and juliet maybe this is my end all be all I don't know, but this guy is giving all the signs of a crazy person, and I'm not going to deal. I'm not going to deal. So at the end of the day, I was just like, hey, you know, like you weren't serious about that whole proposal thing. You were just jokey joking. You were just messing around with me, right? He's like, no, we're getting married in the future. And I was like, oh, weird. So fast forward, you know, we have a two and a half year old daughter. I'm pregnant with twin girls. He's my husband married me i guess i wasn't even gonna marry this guy i told him i was like look i'll marry you when you're worth marrying one day but as of right now we're just 18 19 i met you when i was 17 you know we're just messing around then i got knocked up so <laughs> yeah when you get knocked up it's kind of like dang should i marry the father of my child or should i keep it pushing so at that point it was kind of like eh, set in stone might as well marry this guy and he was really mad i had a baby before i married him he was like really salty about it he's like how are we gonna have a baby and we're not married yet it's improper i'm like um you're improper our whole relationship is improper the way i met you is improper so long story short that's my husband and i's story i guess People are like, oh, I wish I had a love story like that. I'm like, he's a crazy person. <laughs> he literally he even told me a week ago. He's like, yeah, the way we got together, like, I had a lot of red flags, didn't I, babe? And I was like, yeah, you did. And he's like, yeah, I asked you to marry me super quick. And I told you I loved you immediately. I was like, yeah, you're nuts. <laughs> you know, I was like, you're lucky I was feeling the same way. Anyway, I've gone way off set. <laughs> the set was supposed to be like five different jokes and i've only told like three of them and i don't even remember the other two but long story short life is weird and you could be a stand-up comedian by literally just standing here talking about your life for instance does anybody else's husband just walk past messes <laughs> like i'm so serious like you'll just be in the living room together and there's trash on the floor for instance like it's right by the trash can but it clearly missed the trash can for whoever was trying to trash it and maybe that person didn't see it maybe they didn't care maybe they weren't bent over like for me i'm pregnant so i don't want to bend over every time i miss the trash so i might leave it he is just lazy so he'll just leave it if he misses it you know moving on with his day does anybody else's husband see trash actively and walk past it day after day night after night and then you're finally like hey i know you see that trash pick it up and throw it away and he's like oh yeah my bad i just might i mean i i did see it but like i wasn't really thinking about it and it's like liar <laughs> you're a liar i've seen you make eye contact with that trash every day for five days straight and you've decided not to throw it away and i didn't throw it away in a protest so you're not throwing it away and here we are both not throwing it away but i'm not throwing it away for a scientific reason you're not throwing it away because you're scum anybody else's husband do that or it could be laundry laundry on the floor whether it's in the bedroom or in the laundry room it's like why are you stepping over the laundry pick it up put it in a basket put it in the laundry machine 
why are you stepping over the laundry? So he just drives me crazy up the wazoo. And I know everybody can talk about marital problems. That's not really much of a comedy act. It's like, duh, your spouse is going to ignore you. Duh, your spouse is going to get on your nerves. But anyways, I just thought I'd give this whole stand-up comedy thing a try while sitting. Because I am literally 22 weeks pregnant. That means I am more than halfway through this journey. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Congratulations. Congratulations. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But it has been crap. First trimester, I was throwing up out the wazoo. I didn't even know how to stay away from a trash can, even if I went out in public. I was throwing up on floors. I was throwing up on asphalt. I was throwing up in trash cans. I almost threw up on myself a couple of times just because it would come so fast. And it was coming multiple times a day. I was like, get this demon fetus out of me this is before i knew it was twins and then i wait my eight weeks after getting pregnant to go to the doctor because people like to go to the doctor at five weeks and then expect them to be able to see something they're like hey i went to the doctor five weeks they told me to come back in two weeks do you have any idea what that means i mean it means you're not far along enough yet it means that you're too eager it means you're dumb so for me, I wait the whole eight weeks and then I go at eight weeks and they're like, oh, the baby looks great in there, nice and healthy. And I'm like, thank God, I have been throwing up too much for this baby not to be healthy. The ultrasound tech is like, no, baby is great. Throwing up is actually a great sign for pregnancy. It means your progesterone and estrogen levels are going up through the roof. And I'm like, okay, great. So throwing up is a good sign and I hate it. Great. And then she's like, and baby number two is great as well. Baby number two is to thrive. I said, baby number, huh? I said, baby number what? She's like, baby number two, you're having twins. I was like, baby number what? Baby number, huh? And she's like, yeah, I like to twins run in your family. I'm like, baby number, huh? Baby number what? And so at that point, I'm just over it. I'm like, so I got two demons in me making me throw up out the wazoo. I only have the budget for one extra kid in my family. I have a two bedroom house. I'm, I'm not freaking eddie murphy in this hoe i don't make a bunch of money i'm over here like okay we'll get pregnant again give our daughter a sibling and then we'll fi- you know we'll figure out a plan to have more kids in the future maybe and here i get knocked up with twins who can afford twins i mean i'm, I'm figuring it out i'm doing my best i'm budgeting but i only asked for one where did the second one come from? And on top of that, that's two more mouths to feed. I was only planning on one more mouth to feed. My husband's already got a big mouth. I gotta feed the, I just, ugh, I'm, ugh. Finding out I was pregnant with twins. She said baby number two, I said baby number, huh? Baby number what? So it's just this, It's it still hasn't sunk in. Until they come out of my body, I don't think it'll truly land yet. The fact that I'm gonna be a mother of three at 21. Yeah, 21. I already told y'all I met my husband at like 17 and we've been dating for four years. You can do that math. I'm 21 years old and my twins are due before my 22nd birthday. I pay all my own bills. I got, I've been grown since I've been 17. I moved out at 17. I don't, I don't, I'm not new to this adulting thing and I'm not new to responsibility, but I'm new to twins. And then I go tell my family, I'm like, oh, we got twins. I don't know how it's done running our family. My granny, actually, sweet pea. I have cousins who are twins, so it does run in the family. Congratulations. Granny, you waited till I was knocked up with twins to tell me that we have twins in our family. Dad, that's your mama. So you know, you knew, you know. You and I had a large debate before I went to the ultrasound about, are these going to be twins or not? Ha ah, ye, it can't be. There's no twins in the family. And then he's like, oh yeah, that's right. I do have twin cousins. Yeah, I have two sets of twin cousins, actually. But, I mean, you don't think of them as twins because they're fraternal. They're, like, two totally different people. Dad, you and Granny, the long con. (laughs) My husband has twins in his family. I'm black, so it's genetically possible for me to have twins, but it's usually for people over 30. And so I'm like, oh, I'm young, I'm black, you know, I am half Nigerian, so Nigerian black women have the highest rate of having conceiving twins, whatever, but those are small little factors, you know what I'm saying, you really gotta have twins in your family to have them, it's, you know, spontaneous, spontaneity's thing, but it's not that likely, here I come to find out I have four or more of the six factors that you need, nobody wanted to tell me though, so yeah, hopefully you got a laugh or two out of this, I don't know how many, I don't know why, I did this. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, 
it's a JD comedy special. It's a JD stand up comedy special. But I was sitting. It's a JD stand up comedy special. But I was sitting the whole time. Because I'm I, I don't got time to stand all that long. I I'm knocked up and and I see the comedians come out with stools. They adjust their mic so they can sit on the stools, but sometimes it's it's for the joke. So you know what? Stand up comedies, now sit down comedy over here. It's the JD ASMR. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I don't have an ASMR video for you. Hopefully you can fall asleep to this. I don't know, maybe you're laughing too hard to fall asleep. Maybe you're just staring at me like Sydney, this is not funny at all. Get off my screen. I don't know and I don't care. I haven't posted in a week. So this is what you get. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.